It is a regional holiday here on Locked on Grizzlies. Our long local nightmare is over. The dog days are over. The dog days are done. Hallelujah to whatever gods may be. Memphis Grizzlies basketball is back. It is Memphis Media Day. What does that mean? How does that uh, involve our wonderful DeMichael Cole? And we're going to take a look at already some fears about injuries. It's a loaded Monday edition of Locked on Grizzlies. Let's lock in. You are Locked on Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I have never been more happy to say welcome to the first day of the NBA preseason, at least for the Memphis Grizzlies. I am one of your hosts here on Lockdown Grizzlies, Joe Mullinex, joined by the incomparable DeMichael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. I hope you enjoyed your summer, partner, because you're about to get real busy. It is NBA season. It is upon us, and it all gets started today there in Memphis with Media Day. This episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by Game Time. Make sure you're checking out Game Time now. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. As proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe. Tell your friends. Joe and Jim, Joe and Michael are back. You know, it may not always be us together each and every day. DeMichael, as I mentioned, about to be very busy. So there might be a time or two where I'm flying solo. It's still a busy time of the year for me and my day job. So there might be times that I'm a little bit busy. But each and every day, you can expect just about a new Locked on Grizzlies from DeMichael and myself. And speaking of DeMichael, partner, are you excited? Is it like Christmas for Mm. you? Is it something like, you know, you've been doing this a while Obviously, you worked in Philly for a little bit. Then you came home to Memphis. I, correct me if I'm wrong. This is year three for you. This is this, this is my second media day. Uh, second is, media day. Yeah, this is my second full season. So the first year I covered the team, I came. Yeah, you know, I think it was after around Christmas, somewhere around right. that time. So yeah, this is my second time uh, with the media day with the Grizzlies. I'll say that uh, last year it it was very good. You know, it's 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 the time of the year where everyone is just kind of the most relaxed. You know, mm-hmm. everything is a little bit less serious at this sure. point. I mean, on the Grizzly side, there are a couple of things that will be really serious that we'll mm-hmm. talk about later uh, in the show. But for the most part, you know, it's it's the it's the time to laugh and, and joke. And I, I saw uh, I got my guy Tim McMahon uh, at the recent Dallas Mavs media day. You know, he asked Luca. He said, "Did you miss us?" And you know, it's it's the time for questions like that. You know, you don't ask mm-hmm. questions like that uh, after the thirtieth game of the regular season and things True. like that. So uh, it's it's a fun part of the year. But you know what? Uh, we get a lot of answers to the questions that me and Joe have kind of been diving in on mm-hmm. over the summer. And not even that. I know a lot of our locked on Grizzlies uh, viewers. They talk about intel. Guess what? This sure. is part of the year where. I can kind of give you more intel than I was giving you in the summer. So we'll have all that on Locked on Grizzlies. We've got a lot to talk about with Media Day starting on today. And it's going to be a loaded week. Uh, they're gonna The team's going to be practicing. They're going to have the fan open day practice on Saturday. The first game is on – the first preseason game is on Sunday against the Pacers. Joe, it's that time of the year. Uh, we, we don't have to struggle for content at this point. We're going to be overloaded. Uh, we weren't struggling. Come on. Our shows were – Full of relevant information. Struggling, each and every time. struggling each and every time. Put, we were put it in context. Put it in context. Regular season, we were we were knocking them down, mowing them down, and yeah. and you know, I just think the people are going to be really excited to hear what the players got to say. That's right. that's that's that's, the, that's what this part of the year is about. And you know what? At media day, we're going to talk to everyone. With the exception of John Morant. John Morant, mm. uh, now you've heard it here uh, on Locked On Grizzlies. John Morant won't be available at. Grizzlies no. Media Day. So uh, we'll talk to everyone else, though. Desmond Bain, Jared Jackson Jr., you will get the 411. That's right, isn't it? It's 411, right? That's the, uh, that's the information. Do that number? Do they still uh, do that in 2023? Uh, uh, no, not in two or three or three. But but did you just Grizzlies. date yourself? Did you just date yourself, partner? That's a I, I, first. I just, I just thought it was a saying. So people actually oh, dial 411 yeah. to get information. 
back in my day when there was yellow, you know, pa yellow pages and things like what, that, they, they put phone books out in front of your house. We're, um, we're taking it back on Locked On Grizzlies. We're going <laughs> to get you to 411 tomorrow at Grizzlies mm. Media Day. Uh, and on tomorrow's episode, we, we got to have you covered on everything, uh, recapping it. But, of course, you know, follow me and Joe Molinax on Twitter as well. Uh, well, X, formerly Twitter is what we're supposed yeah, whatever to Whatever it's Form called. Formerly Twitter on X. Follow us there. Uh, I'll be there in person, so I'm going to have live updates. As we all know, Zach Kleiman will be up first. Uh, typically, that's the person that people want to hear from the most. Uh, so we'll go get Zach Kleiman. I think it's going to be around 12 o'clock Central Time. And then after that, it's going to be Taylor Jenkins. And then the players will start coming in in whatever order. And uh, we'll we'll take it from there. It almost gives like a first day of school vibe off. It is. Right? I, I, it is. I, I, I've never been to I That's not true. I might have done one media day a long time ago. Uh, but from following it, obviously, as closely as I have over the years, uh, it feels like back to school. Right. You yep. see people you haven't seen in a while because you obviously covering the team as closely as you do, you know, whether it's the Daily Memphian, whether it's, you know, our own over at Bluff City Media, our game reporter. You know, you got to know Shout out to my guy Parrish. Yeah, yeah Parrish. Yeah. Congratulations to him. Well deserved. I love that guy. Um, but, you know, our mutual friend Parker Fleming did it for GBB slash Bluff City Media for a couple of years there. Um, you know, he, he, you get to know people that you'd obviously don't see as much over yeah. the summer for obvious reasons. And now it's back. Right. And, and the thing that everybody is focused on, I will talk more about this here in a little bit. You mentioned that you're, that usually Zach Kleiman is the one that people are most interested in hearing from. Mm -hmm. And that's usually true. I'm going to say this year, at least for me, that's not the case Ooh. because he's already talked about Marcus Smart. Yep. He's already talked about a Desmond Bain extension. Yep. Outside of Steven Adams and his knee, which everybody's going to talk about, not just Zach Kleiman. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, uh, we already kind of know where he stands. Now, what I will ask you, partner, since you are more tuned in than me, and, and this can kind of be where we leave it, because, again, he's going to be the elephant in the room, but he's not going to physically be there. Mm -hmm. How much will Kleiman be able to talk about job because the suspension means he's not on the grounds you know yeah. maybe eventually he'll be ramping up maybe early december uh, we can maybe anticipate a return for him at least a practice being in the facility those mm -hmm. sorts of things but how much do you expect Kleiman to even entertain john morant questions or is it going to be one of those things like we're focused on the guys that here that are here I think he'll answer the questions, but I mean, the answers may not be very revealing, but he'll right. answer the questions. And why I say they won't be very revealing is because from all the people that I've kind of talked to around the John Morant situation, what I've gathered is this is more of the league's uh, decision and call uh, than it is the Grizzlies. Sure. So as we're talking about when John Morant, the questions that they're going to be asked are basically league questions right? in, in the simplest form. When John Morant's going to be back, uh, the Grizzlies basically are at the mercy of the league uh, from that perspective. Now, of course, once he's around and things like that, the Grizzlies will probably have their own stipulation. Now, that's a question we could potentially ask, you know, Zach Kleiman. But as far as what everyone wants to know, just the raw deal of when Jock gets back, uh, more information on the guidelines and things like that, mm -hmm. that's more of the league's intel. So Zach Kleiman will probably be able to shift us in the right direction with some of those answers. But but yeah, you're right. I think uh, not. Zach's not going to be the only one that gets asked uh, about uh, this guy, uh, John Morant. It's going to be Taylor Jenkins is going to get asked about him. Uh, the players, Desmond Bain, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. They're probably going to get asked this well. So I mean, Derrick Rose, of course, one hundred. There's a hundred and ten percent chance that Derrick Rose gets asked about John Morant. So uh, I think uh, we'll hear a lot about John, even though he's not there. But uh, I, I'm I'm. Personally, I want to see what Derrick Rose says. I want to see what Marcus Smart says now that sure. you know they, they've had some conversations. It's actually had some interactions uh, from what I've heard uh, between Marcus Smart and John Morant. So I want to see how that's been going on because at the end of the day, the rest of those guys pretty much know John. When he gets in, it'll be little adjustment uh, with those guys. But when you talk about the stipulations, the rules, the guidelines, you're right on. Uh, we're going to be at Zach Kleiman is probably going to be able to provide the best context. But at the end of the day, it sounds like the league has the most control over those answers. I wonder how annoying it's going to get for them to, to get those questions. Oh, you know it is. Yeah. Because I think that the way that they've built the culture 
of that organization. And we've talked at length about on Lockdown Grizzlies, how strong that actually is in the wake of all of this Morant stuff. Uh, they they are very much going to talk about next man up. I was right? just going to say. Do I was just going to say. If you, you have should. tomorrow off for whatever reason, maybe you are a diehard Grizzlies fan and you take media day off. So you can follow at mm-hmm. the Michael C on X and you can follow all these other accounts that are going to be live tweeting all the answers. I used to do that work. Um, I, I've, I'm not there anymore. Uh, I, I can't stress enough. Do not do a drinking game and have drink every time next man up is said, because you will not make let's, it. Let's, the let's, let's have some fun with it, Joe. Let's, let's, yeah. let's give it an over and under right now. Let's say, let's say six and a half. I think that's a solid number. It's right? over. Or it's over. Six and a half. You easily Literally take it over. Each, each one of those guys is going to say it. Every single one of them. I would say. I would take the over at like nine. Like it, you're going to hear next man up a lot. And, but again, that's to their credit. That's part of what they've tried to build. And I think that the start of this season, and again, I, I'm big on narratives, right? People make fun of me for it, which is fine. It's just the way that I view sports through the, so much of what they've built is around this Grizzlies culture, the standard you hear Jenkins talk about that all the time. This is the first real test of that because John Morant's not there and it is an injury related. It's because he has not lived up to the standard. So what comes next and what do these guys do in the wake of that is going to be fascinating. And that's what I am most interested in hearing. And again, Zach Kleiman, if he wasn't an NBA general manager, he'd be a politician. He's very good at that. And I mean that as a compliment. That is a strength of his in terms of how he handles the media, how he handles himself publicly. The players will be a little more direct, but they're all boys with John. I agree with you on Rose and Smart because they're the ones that are new. Right. So they're not necessarily feeling the loyalty. They haven't come up with Morant. You know, they might be trying to endear themselves to their teammates. But at the same time, if I was Marcus Smart or Derek Rose, I would show up, do the work. Right. You have to do the work that it requires to earn respect. But those guys have pedigrees outside of Memphis that these players should respect in and of themselves. So the way they interact with the media is going to be fascinating. How these players respond to questions, not necessarily about Morant but about stuff from last year carrying over potentially to this season, which will lead us into uh, what we're going to talk about next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. To Michael, there's already questions about Steven Adams' health. Now, maybe you can help us with this. I hope you can, and I'm certain you can after today, after media day. Um, But going into it, there's already whispers and rumors circulating around just how healthy Steven Adams is. Is he even going to make it through training camp? We're going to talk about that next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by Game Time. Recently, I took my daughter to a pro wrestling show, and it was a wonderful experience. We had a great time, except I purchased tickets that I thought were going to be right on the aisle so she could high-five her favorites like Cody Rhodes and Charlotte Mm -hmm. Flair and all those sorts of things. It was her birthday. It was her eighth eighth birthday present. We were not on the road. And I have a girl celebrating her eight-year birthday almost on the verge of tears after I spent this money Uh, on tickets thinking that I was giving her something that I was not giving her. I should have used game time because I would have known immediately that I had the right seats. The app is extremely simple, much easier than what I was using. You can get last-minute tickets. You can get the views from those seats, seeing exactly where you're going to be. That would have been helpful to me. In my situation, game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. Even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last minute deals. And with the game time guarantee, you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets. Be smarter than me. Use game time, download the game time app, create an account and use the code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're talking Steven Adams and a big Kiwi's bum knee next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinex, joined by the wonderful to Michael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. Hopefully he's well-rested. He's got a busy day covering media day today not just for the commercial appeal of course his main day job but also for us here at locked on grizzlies going to have lots of good content and information to discuss on tomorrow's show 
but obviously it is today's show still. And DeMichael, I don't know about you. I know you probably try to turn it off a little bit before the season really gets underway. You went on your trip recently that again, I hope you enjoyed in my perusing of the internet. You know, I work over at Bluff City Media. The Anthony Sane show is probably our biggest YouTube show and podcast that Bluff City Media does. I've known Sane since 2011. I've known him for a very long time, and it's cool to kind of be under the same umbrella with him now. So shout out to Anthony Sane. Uh, he, had, he had uh, Jess Benson of Grind City Media on his show. I think it was the Friday episode. And this was the first that I had heard of Stephen Adams' knee even still being a question. So then I did a little bit of research, and I know Mike Wallace over on Grind oh. City Media. It was either Benson's show or maybe it was Chris Vernon's show. I apologize for not knowing exactly which one, but on I know his, it was Mike his, Wallace. On his show. Oh, yeah. It was his show. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. So it was on Mike Wallace's show, and he talked about Stephen Adams looking great, moving well, but he didn't say with 100% confidence that this guy was going to be fully participating at the start of training camp. So you mix that with Taylor Jenkins' recent interview with NBA.com leading into training camp. How concerned should we be about Stephen Adams even before the freaking season starts? I, I, I say mildly. Uh, I, oh, no. I, I, I get it. I, I get it. Mildly. Because so oh. at the end of the day, it's a big man and a knee. So you you have to, you have to, you know, I, I know, I know, Joe. It's 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 yeah, tough, no, right? You can no, you go no. this this whole off season. He might have think it's, blown it's, out his knee. It's it's tough, but let's you you mentioned the NBA.com interview. I wanna I wanna say exactly what Taylor Jenkins said, and this is probably going to put some people at ease a little bit because I hope so. And th these were Taylor Jenkins' words last week in his uh, interview with NBA.com. He said, Steve O is doing great from all indications, from what he's been doing in the offseason with the stability in his legs, the strength in his legs, and the knee in particular. Hopefully, he should be a full go for training camp. Though, we'll see over the next week. So he's hopeful that he's a full go, but he's saying that they'll see over the next week. Now, from what I've learned about Taylor Jenkins, I don't think he would even mention the idea of a full go if it wasn't a possibility. Remember, there was the one time where Stephen Adams advanced to five on five, and we all thought he was close on mm -hmm. that West Coast trip when they were out in L.A., and right. we, we, we never saw him again this season. You know, he had to get another procedure done and all that. But – Taylor Jenkins is very is very careful with his words in these situations. The fact that Taylor Jenkins is mentioning the possibility of Stephen Adams being a full go, I'm just gonna say, take a deep breath, Grizzlies fans. Uh, hopefully, you know we get to talk to Stephen Adams later himself. Uh, I'm sure he'll take us through that process of what it's been like. But you got to remember, I'll go all the way back to what was the what was the un you know. What was the unknown part of this whole thing? The unknown part of this whole thing was Stephen Adams. I mean, I, I saw him working out myself, drenching in sweat. I mean, looking like he could play. But it was all about how his knee responded. Yeah, we saw him out there running and doing And I mean, you saw the shooting videos of him and everything. Mm. It, it was always all about how the knee responds the next day. And when the knee's still swelling and sore and things like that, the Grizzlies took a step back because at the end of the day, they're not going to put him on the floor until all of that cease. And that's going to be the question that he's going to be asked at media day about the swelling in the knee. If that cease, he's good. If not, <laughs> hold your breath. <laughs> well, it's going to be a disaster. I, yeah. I, I think that it would be obviously not John Moran suspension level, but we know now, even if you were, doubting it before which i wouldn't say i was a doubter because i knew stephen adams was important but it was reinforced last season right oh. in terms of his rebounding in terms of that playoff game, series the I lakers anthony davis embarrassed the memphis grizzlies <laughs> in large part because stephen adams was not on the floor in my opinion so if he's not there like that matters a lot and, and i'm i'm concerned that we're already having this conversation. Yeah. I'm concerned that you're right about Taylor Jenkins. He's usually very measured, but I'm remembering the exact same stuff that you remember, partner, yeah. from back in the winter of 2023. 
and yep. him making it sound like he was going to come back, and then he didn't. Yep. So there was a disconnect there at some point between him, the medical staff. It happens every once in a while between coaches and, and the uh, the doctors and the trainers. I'm not saying it doesn't. That's not an indictment on the Grizzlies. Every organization deals with that. But there was clearly something going on that was not intermingling with the coaching staff and their expectations for having him back. Now, six or seven months later, to be in this spot, it's concerning. So I I mentioned earlier, you know, people are excited about Zach Kleiman. I want to hear from Steven Adams. That's who I want to hear from. Not just because he's hilarious, but because he is going to, as you said, he's actually really smart and really savvy with the media. And I think that he will be a great it'll, interview and he'll, he'll be tell you exactly what you need to hear. It'll be interesting because we, we know Steven Adams sometimes, I mean, the guy could probably have a broken collarbone. He's like, oh, it's just a little sore, man. Sure. Just a little sore. Like, I mean, there were a couple times I was him. he's like, oh, it's, it's nothing. And then next thing you know, he misses a couple games. Like he, we'll see. Uh, sometimes he can, he can be very, like you said, very revealing with his answers and things like that. And sometimes he'll, oh, it's, it's just a little swelling, nothing too much, mate. <laughs> Tis merely a flesh wound, to quote a Monty there Python in the Holy Grail. Yeah, uh, with no arms and no legs. That would be Stephen Adams. Um, so I- I'm excited to hear from him. I'm excited to hear what you ask him and how you cover it. And and again, the mic will literally be at I think I believe you said 12 Central is mm-hmm. when it gets underway today. Make sure you're following him on X at the Michael C. I won't be there. I'll just be giving my input and hot takes, and I'll say something that makes somebody mad, almost certainly. Uh, so you can follow me at Joe Molnick if you want. But make sure you follow at to Michael C because he's going to be doing, you know, I'm biased, but in my opinion, the best job of anybody uh, covering Memphis Media Day because the Michael rocks. Um, when we come back here on Lockdown Grizzlies, we are going to finish up early storylines. Obviously, there's tons of stuff we can talk about over the next couple of weeks. Again, not at a struggle for content any longer here on the Lockdown Podcast Network for NBA podcasts, at least. Uh, What are some things we're interested in as the preseason gets underway? We're going to talk about that next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, one of your hosts, joined by the just really wonderful to Michael Cole. I can't stress that enough of the commercial appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee, also of Lockdown Grizzlies. Very grateful for that. Entering year two of our partnership here on Lockdown Grizzlies. Follow him at to Michael C. Follow me at Joe Mullinax. We're going to have you. One of the two of us or both of us will be with you just about every day, every weekday at least, the remainder of the NBA season. So we're excited to be getting back into the swing, excited to have Grizzlies basketball to talk about, not excited to have Steven Adams' knee issues to talk about. So I'm just going to block that out of my mind for the remainder of the episode and focus on some other storylines, okay? Things that, again, we can build upon this in future episodes. Obviously, there's going to be lots of content and sound bites that come from Media Day later on today uh, that are really going to be something to listen to and maybe connect to some of the stuff we're about to talk about. For me, DeMichael, again, the elephant in the room, John Morant not going to be there, conspicuous by his absence, maybe yeah. inconspicuous. We know exactly why he's not there. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions about who's going to be the fifth guy. Is it going to be Luke Kennard? Yeah. Is it going to be John Conchar? Is it going to be Zaire Williams? I want to hear from those guys and what their perspective is and how they see themselves playing alongside a theoretical foursome of smart Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr. and Steven Adams, because for those guys, that's what matters most. And you know, that's what matters most for Taylor Jenkins outside of the ability to play defense is yeah. how they complement one, each other, one another in terms of their ability, how they maximize the skill of the best players that Memphis has right now. That's Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. So how they kind of see themselves fitting into that competition and conversation, that's my main storyline that, you know, whether it's at media day today or just going through the first week or so of practice, I'll be looking for. Yeah, and just remember, last year at this time, we were having the same question, but it it was Uh different because it was for uh, injured Jaron Jackson Jr. And I remember I went back and looked, and uh, after that media day, I came away with the feeling that Santi Aldama was the guy you like, sure did. Listening, listening to you know Taylor Jenkins and and Zach Kleiman, the way they spoke about him, it was kind of hinting on that hey he's going to get the first shot, and I think we saw that in the first preseason game and whatnot. Even though there were a lot of names being thrown in the hat at the time, but 
Uh, I think basically I said that just to say uh, we're not going to get an outright answer, but you know, we're going to have some conversations. We're going to talk to them. And I believe going to pay maybe our next episode, we'll have more clarity. Well, at least, mm-hmm. though, hey, it's going to be between these two or three guys, possibly, instead of the five, six guys that we've kind of uh, discussed at length, you know, throughout the course of the summer. But here's one thing that I want to talk about, though, and we talked about it uh, ourselves, but um, this thing about the half-court offense, it, it's, right. it's, it's not going anywhere. And That's people, the problem. And people keep saying, oh, why why aren't the Grizzlies – why, why did they lose in the first round uh, this past season? Why did they lose in the second round? Look no further than in both of those series. If you go to the last few games, <clears throat> outside of game five uh, against the Lakers, but game four and game six showed it. And then I think it was, yeah, game five, game four and game six of the series mm-hmm. against Golden State. In all four of those games, the Grizzlies looked so bad on offense. And when Very I say good. bad, I'm talking – uh, looked like they were playing in 2004 in, in one of those 84 to 78 type games. Like mm-hmm. it was, it was ugly. And all that traces back to the half court offense. I want to go back to that NBA.com interview one more time because Taylor Jenkins said something, but we're going to be able to expand on what he said here uh, during media day. This is the thing he was asked uh, from Steve Ashberger, who's terrific at NBA.com. He says, there's one area in which you want the Grizzlies to take a big step this season. This is what Taylor Jenkins answered. He said, we're going to dive into the X's and O's and turn over every rock. I know you like to hear that, Joe. Turn over every every rock to figure out ways we can become more efficient on offense and more disciplined defensively. Uh, He went on to say much more than that, but turn over every rock. Uh, what I got from that, that sounds like desperation to me. And not desperation, you know, in a negative sense, but desperation from a – from a, you know, we have to get this done. Like we, he knows, like we know, like the fan base knows that this question about the half court offense is lingering over this team's head. Yes, I talked to Taylor Jenkins in the summer and we were talking about how the Grizzlies improved in half court offense from, you know, February and on, basically when Luke Kennard got there. Well, guess what? Luke Kennard's going to have a full, you know, uh, preseason camp with the team. Uh, this year, you're going to get John Morant back. You got uh, Derrick Rose, who's a guy who's capable of scoring off the dribble. You got Marcus Smart, who gives you another uh, secondary facilitator when John Morant is potentially in the lineup to go along with Desmond Bain. You have the makings of improving this thing, but they got to figure it out. Because at the end of the day, if we're seeing the same problems all the way up until you know February, March, then there's no point. There's no reason in predicting the Grizzlies to make it to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, and this is also obviously the time of year where you make those grandiose proclamations where you see the Grizzlies fitting. I and, and you're exactly right. We've talked about it enough here on Locked On Grizzlies. If you're an everydayer that's been hanging out with Demichael and I all summer, you know this to be true. That's the biggest question. Yeah, I find it hard to believe. You know, again, Stephen Adams with with his concerns. If Stephen Adams, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Marcus Smart are on the floor. Even if you don't put Desmond Bain, who's an above-average defender now, in that conversation, that's a top-10 defense at worst. I just don't see it being worse than that with those three guys being part of the process. So the half-court offense has to get fixed. And this team, you know, say they finish fifth in the Western Conference, they're a top-8 to 10 team in the NBA. Mm -hmm. They are not able to say that they are legitimate contenders unless their offense is in the top 10 or so in the NBA. Maybe it doesn't have to be exactly 10, but they have to be close, and there has to be a dramatic improvement, which is one of the reasons I broached the idea of trading for Buddy Heald. And people at The Athletic do that, and I see folks retweet, oh, what an interesting (laughs) idea, Buddy Heald on the Grizzlies. Who thought of that? I did. I thought of that. That was my idea, Athletic. I'm not saying you stole it, but – I don't understand why it's smart when you say it and dumb when I say it. Well, that's not true. I do understand why that is. But that I'll, I digress. The point is, if you're not going to do it externally, that's fine. To your point, them saying we're going to turn over every rock. To me, that means Xavier Tillman better watch his back because Ooh. Kenneth Lofton has yep. an offensive skill set that can help in the 100%. half court. Yeah. And if he can, again, he doesn't have to be Xavier Tillman as a defender. If he can just close that gap, we know he's a better offensive possibility, and maybe he eats minutes away from X. 
that tells me that Santi Aldama is going to get every chance in the world every to get chance. 20 or so minutes a game. Regardless of whether or not John, Con excuse me, Luke Kennard starts, he's going to get every chance to get lots of minutes because of how important he is offensively. And the name that I said there before, John Conchar and Zaire Williams both, they have their supporters, they have their things they do well. They have to be able to shoot the three. In the case of Conchar, he has to be willing to shoot it, period. In the case of Williams, he has to convert it at a high clip. They have to show that they are not just specific niche-type players. They have to be able to help this offense in the half court. If they cannot, they cannot play, and they have to find someone who can. Very, very well said. I mean, Joe, Joe, you you hit it on the you hit it on the button. And guess what? We're gonna find out uh, very soon. I mean, it won't be long uh, if we find out if the Grizzlies are making improvements in the area. Because remember last season, the the trends that we saw. Remember the fourth quarter mm -hmm. long leads, the fourth quarter stagnant offense. All you gotta do is we'll get to the fourth quarter because all, all teams run plays all through the first three quarters. They're not trying to switch as much and things like that. But when it's right. when it's crunch time, when it's the last three four minutes, they're switching everything. They're gonna make you your players go ISO against their players, and, and you're supposed to attack mismatches and things like that. But get to your point when you talk about uh, how this leads to success, because people probably wonder why are they hovering on half court offense so mm. so much. Well, guess what? Go look at the past NBA champions. Like you you won't find one. That would it's have, how you win. I mean, the Nuggets. The highest level. The Nuggets would just, uh, with 12 seconds on the shot clock, have the ball in Jokic's hands at the top of the key and just comfortably run offense. And you couldn't stop it. Uh, the Grizzlies don't have to be that unstoppable because I, I think they're a better defensive team than that Absolutely. Nuggets team was. Uh, they don't have to be that unstoppable. But you have to be at least serviceable. Uh, when the game's in the fourth quarter and it's four minutes left and you have a 10-point lead, uh, you know, you don't need to be concerned that your offense is going to dry up over the last four minutes. Uh, and I think, you know, they have the shooters now with Luke Kennard. And I think there are a couple other guys who are going to be second year players. David Roddy, Jake LaRavia. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if Zaire Williams, you know, three point shooting wise. We both talked about how it is in the strength of his, but clearly he's going to keep shooting them. So maybe he can have a bigger year uh, from that perspective as well. Uh, if they can get better shooting around the key guys, uh, it, it'll it'll put them in position to improve in that area. But that's a that's a big if. They've gone the route outside of bringing in Marcus Smart and signing Derrick Rose, which you're more excited about than me. Uh, outside of those things, they've gone the route of internal development again. Cool, yeah. they're pretty good at it. You better turn over every rock because you have to find a way to score more points in the half court. The jury's out on what the Memphis Grizzlies want to do. Now you have to find a way to, A, get to what you want to do as your opponent's game plan for it, and B, find ways to execute in the spaces where you are not as successful consistently. That is what championship contenders do. The Memphis Grizzlies clearly see themselves as a championship contender. Otherwise, Marcus Smart would not be here. Yeah. It's time to grow up a little bit in terms of their schemes, and I do think we'll see that moving forward starting today again make sure you're following DeMichael Cole at DeMichael C if you don't already do so tomorrow's episode is going to be filled with all sorts of responses and thoughts from media day stuff from DeMichael stuff that other people get uh, obviously there's varying levels of interviews and access that different branches of the media have and all that sort of stuff so lots of good content will be coming out and of course here on Lockdown Grizzlies will be a major piece of that as well to Michael, whether you're with us or not, because you're going to be very busy. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful media day. Uh, we're going to use your information, whether you're here or not. Uh, but just, you know, any parting thoughts before we uh, send you off to, to go be a big shot covering the Memphis Grizzlies once again? Let's have some fun. I mean, this is this is the part of the year that that's good, right? Everyone's going to be waiting for all the insides and outs of what's to come from media day. But it's not just media day. Uh, the team's going to be practicing throughout the week. Preseason sure. games are going to get out of the way. And the storylines won't stop here at media day. Uh, I mean, we're going to have a lot to talk about. There are so many players. I mean, I, I just suspect on tomorrow we're going to have to we're going to have to crumble it down a little bit. We're going to have to, mm. to, to you know, find a couple key takeaways uh that we focus on but then there will be some other things that we get into uh later on in the week because guess what like for example jared jackson jr rebounding right it's not the biggest it's not no. the biggest thing out there but 
you can clearly see from from his his social media accounts and things like that. It is something that is in his head. So right. we, we'll see, you know, if it's in his head in a good way, in terms of he's determined to be better at it, or it's a it's a mental block he has to get over, whatever the case may be. But there are so many storylines, big, small, that we're going to dive into. And uh, stay tuned. This is the best part of the year for Locked On Grizzlies. Absolutely. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, emphasizing subscribe. Don't miss a single episode of Locked On Grizzlies as the NBA season approaches. For my wonderful co-host, Michael Cole, I am Joe Molinax. Have a great media day. We'll catch you back here tomorrow. Stay locked in. This is Locked On Grizzlies.